Hi everyone, today's video is about how to stop watching porn. Hi everyone, uh, today's video is going to be about how to stop watching porn. Uh, first of all, this entire video is going to be in English because the subject is a global issue, it's a global problem. And of course, being a Muslim, I'm going to um, say a lot of things with respect from the perspective of Islam and why this, this filth and uh, indulging in this filth can be absolutely detrimental to any Muslim. But uh, of course, there are a lot of uh, Muslims in the world who don't speak my native language of Urdu. So hopefully they will also benefit from, uh, from this being in English. And of course, if you are anyone who does not even belong from the religion of Islam, but you are sick and tired of this filthy habit that you may have, uh, we're going to talk about how you can control it or how you can stop it altogether. And in this respect, I'm going to start off uh, by narrating a authentic hadith from the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, And it is found in Ibn Majah. The English version is volume 5, book number 37, and the hadith number is 4245. It is narrated from Thawan, and the hadith goes like this. It is narrated from Thawan that the Prophet Muhammad said, I certainly know of my people of my nation who will come on the day of resurrection with good deeds like the mountains of Tihama. Good deeds the size of mountains. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make them scattered like dust. Tauban said, O Messenger of Allah, describe them to us and tell us more so that we will not become of them knowingly or unknowingly. And the Rasul Ipaq said, They are your brothers and from your race, worshipping at night as you do, but they will be people who, when they are alone, they transgress the sacred limits of Allah ta'ala. So they are people who will come on the day of judgment with good deeds the size of mountains. They will have so many good deeds. They will have said their prayers. They would be excellent people in society. They're helpful, they're kind, they're generous. They never cheat, never lie. All the good deeds that a man can you know, do in this life and accumulate for themselves uh, for the day of judgment. They will have those deeds the size of mountains, but Allah will wipe them away like dust. Why? Because when they were alone, they crossed the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this hadith should send a bolt of lightning down your spine, as it did mine. Because a lot of us are under this, this foolish uh, idea that what we do when we are alone is our business. And that it really does not uh, uh, matter in comparison to how we are in real life, out in society, we are people who do not rape, murder, kidnap, bribe, lie, cheat. So we are good people. A lot of us think that. I was also amongst one of them. And I'll also confess at this point that I was also, unfortunately, I spent a lot of years, 10, 15 years, um, indulging in this vice, in this filth, in this absolute shameful act. And when I started off on the straight path, when my heart was tired of my own hypocrisy and when I wanted to be a better Muslim, a better human being, somebody who is of sound character, of high moral values, that calling came from within and when I wanted to set on that path, it was very difficult. It wasn't so easy that I could get up one day and start praying five times a day and became a better man because we have once the number one enemy we have the shaitan whispering in our ears all kinds of ideas and suggestions all day around that, you know, seek your pleasures, be driven by your desires. You like this, you want this, do this, do that. Don't worry about namaz, don't worry about fasting. So we have that enemy and then we also have our own nafs uh, or our ego, which is also always driven by desire because we have conditioned it that way. And also society around us is in a, in a state where everything is about entertaining yourself and being driven by your desires and just seeking pleasure after pleasure. So at around the age of 32, 33 perhaps, when my restlessness of my soul was at a peak and I was sick of my own BS and I wanted to make 
an absolute change. Of course, I asked for tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I asked in a very sincere prayer that please allow me to become one who worships you, who understands why I should worship you, why I should become uh, a better person, why I should clean the filth in my soul and I am powerless in doing so. I am helpless so I need your help. And so I changed a lot of my habits um, in terms of where I was getting my information from. And so my YouTube life or my activity on YouTube changed from watching funny videos or music or anything else. It changed to listening to a lot of lectures. And uh, apart from this hadith that I've mentioned, I'm going to link a uh, video that I want you to watch. The title of that video uh, is The Nine Effects of Sin in Your Life. This is actually the first video which opened my eyes and it brought, helped me uh, come to the straight path. Now, uh, in this video, you will uh, definitely benefit from it when you watch it yourself, but I'm just going to summarize it quickly. The number one effect of sin that all these scholars have compiled from different hadiths and Quranic ayahs, the number one effect that sin has in your life, apart from when uh, you will be judged and your good deeds and bad deeds will be judged, the effect of sin that sin has in your current life, in your present life when you are alive, the number one sin, uh, the number one effect of sin is that we will stop your knowledge. Your knowledge will be stopped. Now, what is this knowledge that they're talking about? This is not the knowledge that we get from books or knowledge about your work or whatever. That you can still acquire. This is knowledge about the self, your self. Now, what is the knowledge a man or a woman has about themselves? I like this, I like that. I do this, I don't know why I do this. Sometimes I don't realize what I'm doing, I have no power over it. I don't know what I want. Sometimes I want this, sometimes I want that. I don't know why I do this and I don't understand why sometimes I do completely other things. These, uh, this, is a, this is a smog, this is a fog in our minds. This is a muck up of all knowledge or the lack of knowledge that we have about ourselves. And so when I saw that video that that is the number one effect that sin has in your life, that your knowledge is stopped. So that is what shook me to the core that here I am very aware that my soul, that my heart is restless, but yet I'm doing whatever I want in life. I am pursuing my joys and my pleasures. And so that's why in totality, I'm a person who just doesn't know what they want and what they don't want. And if I want to come closer to God, if I want to be a better Muslim, a better man of, of better values, then I am, I am the number one hindrance in my own knowledge. I cannot know for sure, I cannot know for a certain fact that I am headed anywhere because there were barriers in my knowledge. So that was a video that, that number one led me to the awareness that if I have to become a better person, if I have to become a better Muslim, what is the first thing that I'll have to do? I'll have to consciously, actively stop any minor or major sin that I am willfully doing in my life. And the first of such sin, unfortunately, was this cursed um, invention of pornography. And so this should be enough reason for why one should stop indulging in this because you will not be able to get closer to the Creator, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will not be able to get closer to your true self, what your spirit wants. This process, if you are making any efforts into it, if you are doing good deeds, if you're charitable and you're nice to other people and all of that, none of it, none of it will be able to uh, go into a linear progression. It will not be a step-by-step -step progression if you still consciously and actively are indulging in this filth. And of course, like we already discussed, for Muslims, um, we pray five times a day. We have to purify ourselves. We wash our hands, our face, our mouth, our nose, our hair, our forearms, our feet, five times a day before presenting ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Astaghfirullah, who are we kidding? Can you kid the creator of the universe? 
Can you kid yourself if you know that whilst making these efforts in good deeds, you're also, when you are absolutely alone, only you know what you are doing and only your Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what you are really doing. So, my sincere advice and request to all of you is that when we are in our teens and we are in our adolescence or even in the 20s, we don't have a lot of wisdom. We don't have a grip on things. We're just jumping from one branch, another branch, like a monkey. We're, we're chasing one desire, another desire. And then all these pleasures are there. They are a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to know what is right and what is wrong. And your heart is the enough indicator, is, is alone enough to tell you whatever you're doing, is it really feeling good? Is it really feeling bad? And apart from all the justifications we can give to anybody else, deep down inside your niyat, your intention is only known to you. You really know what you are wanting. You really know what you are thinking. So if you are somebody who wants to come close to your, your creator, and if you want to just be a better person, please know this, that if you have this vice in your life, and you are doing it alone, it is going to put blocks in your progress of becoming a better Muslim or becoming a better man. I hope and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this video may be of some benefit to you. And uh, just a psychological fact after it, if you are able to stop yourself, know for a fact that any habit that you repeatedly do can be reversed by a reversal of those habits. And like with every addiction, you need to replace it with somebody, with, with something. So every time you are called to this addiction, I hope you will now be able to replace it with the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching and that on that last day, your, all your good deeds will be on one side and what you do alone is going to be on the other side. May Allah bless us all.